Well, good morning. It's always a pleasure to be at Hobnob, and I do know that every one of you out there listening to us with great intent and anticipation of what we're going to say. I want to say something about Scott saying we're going to have food at both ends. It kind of reminds me of the church bulletin that said on Easter we're going to baptize babies at both ends. You need to think about that for a minute. I love this time of the year. You, you get the cool nip in the air, the leaves start in the fall, and we prepare for Halloween and All Saints Day and get ready for Thanksgiving. And one of my favorite things about October is that I get to get a lot of candy when kids trick or treat. And if you haven't tried caramel, apple, Laffy Taffy, you haven't eaten good candy. Every one of those pieces of candy comes with a joke on it that's written by a child. And some of them are, are read to my grandchildren by Mary and I, and I love them. Here's one I think you'll like. When you, what do you get when you cross a vampire with a snowman? Frostbite. That's pretty simple. What kind of streets do zombies like? Dead ends. Well, our streets and highways are about to be dead ends strictly only for zombies if we don't do something about trying to fix the highways in the state of Mississippi. If you're going to have workforce development, you better have a highway to get them to work so they can work and get the raw materials to the factories that you need. Unmaintained highways and streets cause automobile damage, and automobile damage causes insurance rates to go up. Of course, a lot of other things do. You know, like technology, it costs more to repair a car simply because you got, it's just a, a computer wrap around an engine, but you got sensing devices, you got automatic braking, and you even have autonomous driving vehicles. If we don't fix the streets, even these autonomous driving vehicles will refuse to travel on our streets in Mississippi. All right. Earlier this year, the Gulf Coast got hit by a hurricane. It was only a Category 1. It was Nate. Not a big hurricane, but here's the good news. We had very little damage on the Gulf Coast strictly because of two things. One, the good Lord was with us. We enforced building codes, and we built higher and drier and stayed out of the floodplain. Just think about that. We did that beginning after Katrina in 2006 when we passed building codes, something that was dearly needed on the Gulf Coast. Our state rating bureau, the good news, is lowered the rates for 269 fire districts in the state of Mississippi. We have a little over 1,100. What does that mean to you folks out here in the audience and the people in the back of the room? It means that your insurance rates will stay down level. Every time you improve the fire rating in the state of Mississippi, rates go down. If fire ratings go up, rates go up with them. They all work together. I'm proud to say that we have done something right in the state of Mississippi about fire protection. Now, speaking of fire protection, this is Fire Protection Month. I'm going to talk very briefly about the fact that there are two things that you can do to reduce fire deaths. We reduce fire deaths in the state of Mississippi about 38% in the last few years. And how do we do it? Smoke alarms. Smoke alarms. This year we'll distribute 15,000 free smoke alarms paid for by the insurance industry because they don't want to fire any more than anybody else does. Health care is on everyone's mind in the state of Mississippi and the United States. A decade ago when I took this job, I didn't know anything about health care. You didn't have to know anything about health care. You didn't have to be an expert. Today, you have to be an expert in health care every day of the week simply because it's a moving target. My office has embraced innovative approaches to providing affordable health care throughout the state of Mississippi. And I know you're sitting there thinking, he doesn't know what I pay for health care. But let me tell you this, Mississippi has the lowest health insurance premiums in the United States. Look it up. It's a fact. We have the best and lowest insurance premiums in the United States, and we cover just as much as they do in New York or California with our health insurance. Everybody has the same type of basic plan. The problem is that we don't have consistency out of Washington, D.C. to know what's going to happen. I'm proud of the work and the relationship that we have with our congressional delegation because the health care problem is not going to go away with the changing winds that we have in Washington. We've taken a strong stance at our department against opioid crises. 
We have requested that all health insurance carriers in the state of Mississippi limit the number of opiate pills that you can get or painkillers to what the CDC, the, uh, the Center for Disease Control, recommends, and they're following those guidelines. Sure, we've all gotten calls and said, why'd you do that? It's the right thing to do. We've got to get a handle on opiate addiction in this state. Last week, a world-famous novelist created a furrow when she decided to tweet about our state with the inference that every single person in Mississippi was not only illiterate, but ignorant as well. I disagree with her. We are proud of Mississippi, and I hope you are too. I'm here to tell you she was wrong. All she needs to do is take a good hard look around and she'd see what I see. A strong people doing great things in our state. You just heard the governor talk about what we have done in this state of Mississippi. It's wonderful. And I think Phil has been a charger and a leader for workforce development in this state, and I appreciate what he's done. I'm going to give you some quick facts so I can stay on time and keep Scott happy. But the, the department licensed about 1,100 companies a year. We've licensed 28 new companies this year. Uh, since I've been in office, almost 300 new companies have started right in the state of Mississippi. Example, the Gulf Coast. Uh, Ten years ago, we had nine companies riding property and casualty on the Gulf Coast. Today, we have 31. That's a big improvement. What it means, you've got competition. Rates are lower. It's good for every consumer on the Gulf Coast. We have over 27,000 licensed agents in the state, 79,000 appointments. And as late as last week, we developed uh, some consumer programs that have helped folks. We have given away or recouped for our consumers over four and a half million dollars. Never shows up in a budget. It goes straight to the consumer for fraud by insurance companies or individuals. Our state fire academy has trained over 10,000 folks this year already. We'll train about 15,000 before the year ends. And I will close with some corny jokes after I s say a few words about something that's very dear to me. Many of you know that Governor Phil Bryant uh, has talked about the fact that we need to honor veterans in this state. We are one of the few states that have never honored Vietnam vets. With the help of Governor Phil Bryant, in the legislature, we have printed 20,000 copies of a book that's titled A Time to Honor. It concerns the honoring of our Vietnam veterans. Many people have given money for this. One of the banks that gave money was Community Bank to help us get 20,000 copies printed. We give this to anyone who is a Vietnam vet and has a Vietnam Service Medal. All you have to do is call the Veteran Affairs Board, RC, somebody at Community Bank, you can get one of these books. We still need to raise a little more money, but I will tell you this, if you haven't looked at the series on MPB or one of these books, you need to look at it. This is important for veterans. <laughs> now, I'm a Vietnam vet, and I will tell you, even today, when you say you're a Vietnam vet, people look at you kind of odd, but this is something that's worthwhile, and, and it's a very good program for the veterans of this state. Why can't you tell a skeleton anything? Anybody know the answer to that? That's awful Laffy Taffy. It goes one ear and out the other, and my message to you today, I hope, doesn't go in one ear and out the other when you're listening to what we've had to say about the great state of Mississippi and the Department of Insurance. Thank you for being here. God bless you, the great state of Mississippi, and the United States of America. <laughs>